Hello, I'm Odin, and today's request comes from my Monday live streams. I do a live stream every Monday right here on YouTube, and this is a Star Wars prop that was specifically requested many times. It's the Mandalorian's Baskar Steel Spear, as seen in Season 2 of The Mandalorian. So I'm going to make the Baskar Spear. It's going to look very, very similar to the spear that I have made just a couple of months ago when I made Odin's Gungir Spear. Now, obviously, this one's gold and that one's going to be silver, but overall, it's, it's a spear. How am I going to do this differently? Well, what I want to do when I'm making the Mandalorian spear, which there's, there's no spoilers here. This has been all over the internet. The fact that he's got a spear is no big deal. How he gets it, that's a cool story. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely go and watch the show, season two of The Mandalorian. And enough said there, he's got a large pointy stick. I'm going to make a large pointy stick. So how am I going to make the Mandalorian spear different from Odin's spear? Well, when I made Odin's spear, I used a lot of power tools, right? I used a lathe to put some of the details on the shaft. I used a bandsaw, I've used a sander. I don't want to use any of that. What I'm planning on doing when I'm building this is I'm going to do the whole thing using my rotary tool. And if I can, that's it. I might use a heat gun. I don't think I need to. I think that's this is it. I think this is the only power tool I need to make this spear happen. And I don't think that's a big stretch. This was one of the first, not this model, but this was one of the first style of, of tools that I had long before the rest of the stuff you see around me, because this is definitely a hobbyist tool, and I have no concern with this being the only one I'm gonna use, because realistically, I need to use something to make this happen a lot faster. So that's my restriction, that's what I wanna build, and when I'm done, I'll have another metallic spear. I'm starting with a 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. It's a little over 6 feet tall. Perfect. I mark the center point on the pipe. And then I wrap a piece of poster board around it. It felt like an easy way to mark the tube. Because I can follow the edge of the poster board ring like a line to make sure that I can get as straight of a cut as I can. That's probably much straighter than I could get it just about any other way. That's Actually, probably better than I was going to do with the band saw. That's kind of cool. Lightly sand the cut ends just to make them neater. I want to make the shaft of the spear separate like a billiard table cue stick. And I'm going to need to make these wood pieces fit inside the PVC pipe. I start to sand down the painter's extension pole, just trying to make it small so it'll fit inside. What I'm using is a coarse grade sanding drum, but it still feels slow to make a change and I have two more of these wooden sticks to make fit. So I started whittling, which really felt like it was going much faster. And I can still make adjustments with the sanding drum. And about 25 minutes later, the wood fit inside the PVC pipe. There we go, okay. And a little while after that, I got the other half whittled down. And I got it to be a snug fit in the other PVC pipe. Now, I don't want the chrome metal ring to be exposed on the finished spear. I'd rather cover it with a small piece of thin-walled PVC pipe. I still need to make the end smooth and flat. This is a piece that I can force over the metal end of the extension pole. Now, when I screw the two halves back together, we only see PVC pipe, no wood and no metal trim. So I add a long stick, I cut it in half so I can put it back together again. That may not make a whole lot of sense except to think about how you're going to fit this into your car so you can actually take it somewhere. On a production shoot, big bulky equipment's pretty normal, so having the, the prop be full-sized and, and a complete piece that doesn't come apart is no big deal. But uh, getting this to your con, yeah, you're going to want to be able to take it apart and put it in the back seat. So that's what all that's about. So I could do it in multiple pieces. I could do it in thirds instead of in half. In fact, there's designs that go on the staff that making it into thirds would make more sense. Except I don't want to do this another time and I don't have the parts. I'd actually have to go out and buy another one of these connectors. I've only got the one for today. So I'm going to make mine in half and that's going to be fine. But I do need to add the decorations that go on the side and I'm gonna need to cut these down so they're the right length because it's too long right now. In addition to marking where the cut will be, I place the three decorative bands that go on either end of the spear. 
As I get ready to cut this line, I'm gonna do it with a coping saw or something else again, and not a PVC pipe cutter. I can hear in the back of my head, who's gonna tell them they actually make tools just to do that? Well, you know, I, I, I do have one. I've got a PVC pipe cutter, actually courtesy of my wife, and my main issue with it is that I don't have the skill. I don't, I, it never cuts 90 degrees the way I want it to. It always ends up being very off. I thought about it as I talked about it. Well, why not use the cutter first anyway? I just need to be sure I don't cut too much off because I'm gonna smooth out the cut with a sanding drum anyway. To etch the lines in the PVC pipe, I secure my rotary tool in a vise. And then I have both hands free to hold and rotate the PVC pipe, etching a nice heavy panel line right where my pencil marks are. One detail that's hard to see here, I have some bolt threads that are screwed into the one, two, three block. This gives me a brace that I can hold the pipe against while cutting with a rotary tool. A little sanding will remove the fuzzy edge that the cutting bit left behind. The PVC pipe, it's been stored in such a way that it's got a slight bend to it. Not that big of a deal, but I don't really want to bend in the best car spear, as well as I don't really want a whole lot of flex, which there isn't much, but there's enough. So what I'm gonna do is take a length of wooden dowel that easily fits inside. But if I put a series of rings of tape on the, the dowel, that'll increase its diameter. This has a lot less give than the PVC pipe does. It'll straighten the pipe out. One, I found that just three layers of tape is two, enough for a really good fit inside the pipe. Three. I'm surprised at how perfect three layers of tape is. To do the same thing to this end. This is the regular uh, painter stick. When you have a painter's extension pole, this thread is what you use to attach it to the handle of your uh, roller, which is what this is as well. So the orange piece is the handle to a, to a paint roller for painting the wall of your house. And this is the, the wooden tip from the painter's extension pole. So I'll use this to use the spearhead and I'll need to put this into the end. I took a little too much off on that. Yeah, it's close enough. For the other end of the spear, not the pointy side, I cut a circle of foamed PVC board to use as a plug. And I test fit the plug into a piece of scrap PVC pipe. So what's happening inside the piece of PVC pipe? This is the, the, the lower half of the spear. I'm gonna have the connector that connects to the top half of the spear. I'm gonna have a plug that goes in the bottom and I'm gonna have a length of wooden dowel that goes in between the two of them. And then the top half, I've got the, the end that will fit into the spearhead, so that goes in the top. Then I've got the bottom half that I mashed together before. This has got the receiving end for the, the lower half, which you can see is a totally different thread from, it's just the style of this extender pole. You can find them that use exactly the same threads all throughout, whatever works. This one was just easy for me to find. So that will screw together like that. So this will in the bottom, this will go in the top, and I got a piece of wooden dowel that goes in between. And I just need to glue them together. I'm using a polyurethane glue to glue the wood to the PVC. This type of glue will foam up when activated with water, which will fill the gaps inside the pipe. I thread the connectors together and then set the lower half. The two parts of the spear will fit together the best this way. Then I can work the big dowel inside the pipe. This glue is kind of like thick honey, so it takes a little effort to get the parts together. I can use PVC pipe cement to glue the end cap into the spear. I got it pushed in just a little too far, but this is gonna work just fine. The top half is glued together the same way. The receiver for the lower half is glued in place and then the tape dowel is glued inside. And then finally, the end that connects to the spear head is glued in place. There's a little bit of tape to help hold it there. That's it for the body of the spear. I just need to let the glue set, clean it up, and I can paint it. So let's do the head of the spear now. 
I draw out a pattern for the head of the spear, making sure that I have the center line marked. And to get a nice curved line, I use a hip curve ruler that Felicia has left at the shop. It has marks on both sides, so you can make symmetrical curve lines. So if I didn't have Mr. Fancy Pants ruler, I could have drawn one side that I really liked, drawn both and picked which one looked better, but obviously they wouldn't be identical. Cut it out, flip it over. This and this is still my center line. So if I line that on the center with the tip and this with the center on the back, I could use the part I cut as a guide to get symmetrical curves on the tip of my spear or whatever other weapon I'm working on. That's it. Not very big, but it's a fine size to go along with this. It seems about right. Eh, my could maybe be a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll cut it a little bit bigger. I traced the pattern onto a piece of thicker black foamed PVC board. So I tried to be very careful. This is not a good, good side, but I tried to be very careful that with my uh, ink marks, it was pretty consistent tracing the outside out. I've got parts that I can ignore, but overall I got a very straight line. I didn't sketch it in. What I want to do to increase the size, I'm going to cut on the outside of the line, which overall will make the part just a couple of millimeters bigger. And I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. It takes multiple cuts, but all you need is a sharp knife to cut through the foam PVC board. It's nice that the hip curve ruler is metal because I can use it for a guide while cutting. Once I'm more than halfway through the cut, the cut itself works as a guide. It's about two hands, it's a little more than two hands tall. That's good. It's fine. I cut the goofy end off the paint roller handle, and then I need to cut a slot right through the sides for the spear tip to fit in. I'm making this cut with a ceramic cutoff wheel. Now these are very easy to break, and when they do, they shatter. So please, wear eye protection. I just followed the decorative line on the orange handle because it's the right size for the spear tip, about six millimeters. I cut out the ends and remove the bit that I don't need. And the spearhead starts to come together. The metal end on this orange handle is the same size as a three quarter inch PVC pipe. So I'm gonna use a sanding drum to sand down the extra plastic so it matches the metal. I cut a small piece of thin walled three quarter inch PVC to go over the orange plastic. So this is why I talked about maybe wanting to use a heat gun. This piece isn't going to fit all on its own, just over it. If I heat it up, I should be able to smash it over this and cover it completely with PVC. Why would I want to do that? Well, aside from having all the outside be kind of the same material so it'll look the same when it's painted, um, this type of plastic doesn't really glue very well and, and, and I've roughed it up so badly it wouldn't paint terribly well. I mean, it, it'll paint, but uh, I would rather have PVC. It's, it's nicer to work with. And it's such a small piece that I can't hold it while I'm heating it up because I'll burn my fingers. But after a while, I get the plastic soft enough that I can force it over the orange plastic. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's about what I want. Let's make sure that's good. Oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> Easy! No, it really wasn't, but that's what I wanted, so okay. <laughs> and that little piece of PVC pipe that I stuck in the end, that's there to hold the heated pipe open while it cools. Now, it'll fit over the main body of the spear. There's one last part to bake, and it's a tricky one. I need to cut a wedge of PVC pipe to fit over the orange plastic. It also needs to meet the black foamed PVC spear tip. But before I get too involved with that part, I sand a cutting edge into the spear tip, grinding off an angle from both sides of the black PVC spear head. I made marks on the thin walled PVC. My wedge cut needs to go from about halfway out to a point where it just kind of melts into the spear tip. Getting the line drawn on the round pipe is tricky all on its own. And then cutting that straight line equally on both sides, that's even more of a challenge. So I got my first attempt, which was way too short. It's not uh, 
could work. Shorters might be better, but I have to make sure that I've got it cut to where it meets, to where the, the rounded bit actually meets against the, the, the flat black blade. Then I tried doing one a little longer. And that one works, this could work. I mean, this one makes pretty good contact, but it's, I, I still dug out too much here. So I have to try again, and hopefully third time will be the charm. So ultimately what I want is something like this. Now this one actually finally worked. And these pieces, this isn't the first try or the second try. This is like the third. Here's the fourth and then the fifth. So it took a few tries to get two that actually were pretty much the same length and would cover over the orange piece and get a pretty good positive fit up the sides. There's a whole bunch of shapes to have to fit here. Um, this would be a lot faster with a belt sander and a bandsaw, that's for sure, but it is doable without. So I'm gonna glue that together and that's it to the pointy part of a spear. Don't need those. With all the parts cut out, I can glue them together with PVC cement. Be honest, I highly, highly, highly doubt that this solvent glue is gonna to touch this orange plastic, but I may as well put it on there and try. I tried to put a good coat of glue on the wedge piece to be sure that the PVC glues to PVC. Now I am actually willing to admit, something this size and shape, probably a lot easier to 3D print, but uh, I like making this up by hand, so that's the way I wanted to do it. Gaps were still appearing around the wedge pieces, so I clamped them shut and sealed them with super glue. I also used a glue accelerator to get the glue to set. And once I started doing this to one side, I worked the super glue around all the seams. I also used the glue to seal the exposed foam edge. I was hoping to get a smoother looking cutting edge by sealing it up this way. No glob of super glue ever lays down perfectly. After it sets, I sand off all the big stuff and then go back and do a fine finish sanding by hand. And right now, I'm pretty happy with the spearhead. I'm curious how well it's gonna paint up. But before I can paint anything, I need to clean the spear body, sanding away all the big marks and some of that crud. Then I can use acetone to remove as much of the printed label from the pipe as I can. The ink that they use in the pipe has a bad habit of coming through the top coats of spray paint. Removing it now is better than reading it on the finished prop later. The letter V in PVC stands for vinyl. So for my primer undercoat, I'm gonna use a gloss black spray that is made specifically for vinyl. Because it's been months and Gungnir is still the tiniest bit tacky to the touch, I had used regular primer on Gungnir. And I hope this black spray paint will avoid that. And the better the black glossy undercoat is, the better your silver metallic coat will be. And I hope this time the paint will fully cure. All the materials I used for this project, I picked up locally. I put a list in the description. All right. I've got my Mandalorian Beskar spear, and I'm really pretty happy with how this turned out. And I'm really happy. It only took a couple of days with just a rotary tool to do it. The fact that it's all plastic should make it con safe. You know, I have a concern that this might be a little too sharp as a point to, to be technically con safe. That's gonna depend on the convention you go to and the weapons check that you actually have. But it is all plastic and it should be okay. And if it's not, it might be funny for the Mandalorian to walk around with a cork stuck on the end of his spear. I'm still really happy with how this turned out. The fun thing for me is because of the way it breaks apart. As long as I keep using the same type of painter's extension poles, then the parts I make for this spear will be interchangeable with the parts from this spear. So I can take silver Baskar spear parts and interchange them with golden Asgardian spear parts and it'll work out just fine. Or I could make something new with only making the part that I needed. I could make the uh, Zora spear from uh, Breath of the Wild, the Crescent Moon Top. 
So I just take this top off and I could make the crescent moon and put it on. And the rest of the shaft is passable. I think the Zora spear has more details in the bottom, but it'd be passable. Uh, and if I wanted to make the golden spear from the seventh voyage of Sinbad, I just take gun gears top off and then make an extension because the minotaur is what eight feet tall and then put the spearhead on top of that and i'll have the golden voyage of spin bed golden voyage of sin bed minotaur spear and that's kind of neat I, I keep building on this if i wanted to could make a double-ended section right so there's the the screw part that goes in the middle if i make one that's got a, a screw on both ends i can make a double-ended spear and do kind of a darth maul spear or i'm sure there's a character that's got a double-ended spear i just can't think of one off the top of my head but i think this is the method i want to stick with i'm really happy with how this turns out i'm really happy with how this works out and you could say this is the way that Odin makes. Now that is a high-tech Ewok spear. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I want to thank Michael Talbot, Tyler Rizzuto, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.